Hello there. Today, we are going to talk about the Egyptian architecture. Egypt has one of the longest histories of any country, tracing its heritage along the Nile Delta back to the 6th and to the 4th millennia BCE. Considered a cradle of civilization, ancient Egypt saw some of the earliest developments of writing, agriculture, urbanization, organized religion, and central government. Iconic monuments such as the Giza Necropolis and its great sphinx reflect this legacy and remain a significant focus of scientific and popular interest. Egypt's long and rich cultural heritage is an integral part of its national identity, which has endured and often assimilated various foreign influences, including the Greek, Persians, Roman, Arab, Ottoman Turkish, and Nubian. So now, let's take a glimpse of the past. Let's go back to the year 3200 BC to the 1st century AD and witness the Egyptian architecture, its influences, and architectural character. First up are the influences. We are going to talk about the geographical, geological, climatic, historical and social, and religious influences. But first, let's talk about the geographical. Egypt consists of a narrow strip of fertile alluvial soil along both banks of the Nile, flanked by shelves of barren land and rug cliffs, beyond which lie a red desert plateau. Did you know? The Nile was a trade route to eastern and western foreign trade, and because of its overflowing and fertilizing waters, this made the desert saris into fruitful fields. On its bank, therefore, the Egyptians sighted their villages and cemeteries. Geological Influence In this part, we are going to talk about the materials and all such things available in the local. Stone is abundant in Egypt in quantity and variety. These were used in buildings and for vases and personal ornaments as the country was poor in metals. However, copper is gained chiefly from the Sinai Peninsula. Tin was imported for the making of bronze. For buildings, the chief kinds of stone were limestone, sandstones, and alabaster and hard stones such as granite, quartzite, and basalt. It is partly owing to the durable nature of this building's materials that so many monuments still exist. The gigantic scale, which distinguishes Egyptian architecture, was made possible not only by the materials, but also by the methods of quarrying, transporting, and raising enormous blocks of stone into position. Quarrying was done with copper tools and by the use of timber wedges which when swollen by water, split the blocks away from the natural rock. Houses, palaces, were constructed of large sun-dried bricks. There were very little building timber, but the indigenous date plum was sometimes used. The next influence is climatic. The climate is equable and a form temperature. Snow and frost being wholly unknown for a storm fog, and even rain are rare, which accounts to a large extent for the good preservation of the temples. Egypt has been said to have but two seasons, spring and summer. The climate was thus of importance in developing the qualities of the architecture. Admitting of simplicity in construction, for though it demanded some protection against heat, there was no necessity to provide against inclement weather. There was no real need for windows and thus unbroken massive walls not only protected the interior from the fierce heat of the sun, but also provided an uninterrupted surface 
for hieroglyphics or pictorial representation of religious ritual, historic events, and daily pursuits. Roof was not an important consideration and flat roofs of stone slabs sufficed to cover the buildings and exclude the heat. The next influence is historical. Egyptian civilization is the most ancient of any of which there is a clear knowledge. Its history is partly derived from the Holy Scripture and from Greek and Roman authors, but more particularly the Egyptian buildings by which can be traced back for more than 4,000 years BC. The pyramids are thought to be a thousand years older than any buildings which has yet discovered in Western Asia. The subject of the next division, the kings or pharaohs from the title Pera, Great House, have been arranged in 30 dynasties, extending down to 332 BC. These have been based on the list of Manito, an Egyptian priest who lived about 300 BC, and compiled a history of Egypt in the Greek language. One of the most interesting aspects of ancient Egypt is religion, the depth of Egyptian thinking and the rich imagination displayed in the creation of ideas and images of gods and goddesses are beyond compare. In elaborating their beliefs, the Egyptians were working on a cosmic plane, searching for an understanding of the most basic laws of the universe. They developed the first thought forms of Godhead, the beginning of a religion. Their beliefs evolved slowly over the centuries and gradually developed into a comprehensive worldview shared by the people of the Nile. In Egypt, before the concept of God existed, Magical power was encapsulated in hieroglyphs of a sceptre, or god or staff. This is one of the most enduring symbols of divine power, ever present in images of the pharaohs and the gods. As human society evolved, people gradually gained a degree of personal identity, but a higher sense of individuality. Humans began to conceive the gods in a personalized form. This stage in development is called mythical. In Egypt, this process began during the late prehistoric period when writing was being invented and myths were being formulated. At that stage, every Egyptian town has its own particular deity, manifested in a material fetish or a god represented in the shape of an animal, such as cat goddess, cobra goddess, ibis god, or jacko god. As the pantheon grew in cohesiveness, these gods and goddesses were given human bodies and credited with human attributes and activities. The temples in the major cities throughout the land were constructed to venerate local gods. During the New Kingdom, these temples honored a triad of gods based on the pattern established by the mythical family of Osiris, Isis, and Horus. Like all religion, that of ancient Egypt was complex. It evolved over the centuries from one that established local deities into a national religion with a smaller number of principal deities. Some theologians think that Egypt was moving towards a monotheistic faith in a single creator, symbolized by the sun god. There was no single belief system, but the Egyptians shared a common understanding about the creation of the world and the possibility of reverting the chaos if the destructive force of the universe were unleashed. Religious Influence A close connection between religion and architecture is everywhere manifested at this epoch. The priesthood was powerful, possessed of almost unlimited authority, and equipped with all the learning of the age. The religious rites were traditional, unchangeable, and mysterious. A type of mystery is one of the most great characteristics of Egyptian architecture as well in its tombs and its temples. The Egyptian attained to a very high degree of learning in astronomy, mathematics, and philosophy. The remains of their literature have been preserved to us in the papyri, or MSS written on paper made with the piece of papyrus. In the theory, the religion was monotheistic, but in practice it became polytheistic. A multiplicity of God was created by personifying natural phenomena such as the sun, moon, and stars, as well as the brute creation. The Egyptians were strong believers in the futures, hence that their care in the preservation of their dead 
and the erection of such everlasting monuments as the pyramids.